Hello and welcome to another episode of Japan at War. So I was looking around YouTube and came across this video, which I've actually only watched the first 30 seconds. And I've, you know, I've said before, I'm not a big fan of East versus West debates, but I did think it'd be, you know, cool to give context, maybe broaden the conversation. And oh yeah, make sure to go like the original video. The link will be down below. Okay, so a little context with this video. It's actually really hard to determine the skill level of the rapier artist or as to what martial arts school that they actually went to. And we should also remember that Kendo does have a lot of older sword techniques within it, but it's still a more modern art and has been heavily sporterized. All right, here we go. Okay, checking each other's distance. Ooh. Oh, he did not have the right distance. Mm. Yeah. That guard would help protect him. Not that though. Not quite fair, but life isn't fair. Ooh. Oh, wow, that was textbook. Oh, so is that. Damn. Hmm. Okay. Let's see how he does. I don't think this guy's as experienced with that dagger. A little unfair, but like I said, life's unfair. Oh. What? Love the bow. So I think it's clear from the video that this was a friendly match and not super serious. But I also still think that there's a lot of things that we can take away from this video. Now, obviously the Kendoka has a disadvantage due to the fact that the rapier is a much longer weapon than his Shinai. However, the Shinai, which is the bamboo sword, is almost certainly lighter. From what I saw, the Kendoka is most successful when he steps offline. The rapier's thrust is just much faster than your typical slash, so when he goes for it and he doesn't pay attention to distance, well, he eats it. Another thing that jumps out at me is the displacement of blades, which I mean by that is when a blade is knocked to the side, often to create an opening for the other swordsman. The katana first off is a heavier blade typically, which it's harder to move a heavier blade with a lighter blade than moving a light blade with a heavy blade. Another thing to consider is that one of these blades is a single-handed weapon, while the katana uses two hands typically, which creates more stability. Now obviously technique can mitigate a good portion of these disadvantages, but it still doesn't change the facts. 
from my experience and from what I can tell with my eye, it's that the Kondoka has to be a little faster, displace the opponent's weapons, step offline, close the distance, and then strike. While the Rapier Artist has to really watch his distance, keep his blades center, and then strike with a lot of precision. Now that part is very key. It's the debate between slash versus stab. See, with a stab, especially with a narrow blade like the Rapier, you have to be a lot more on point. See what I did there? With what you're stabbing. In the video, some of these thrusts would have hurt and wounded, but not end the fight. And even if you did manage to stab a critical spot on the body, depending on what it is, the opponent could still rush forward for an attack. I know some of you might disagree with that, but hold on and just think about it. All that adrenaline rushing through your veins and you rush forward, you get run through with the rapier. At that point, with all that adrenaline and how fast everything is moving, you might not even feel the blade in you and naturally you're still going to attack your opponent. Which, by the way, a rapier can cut to. There's several times where the rapier's blade does have glancing cuts and stabs. Would this hinder the opponent? Yes. End the fight? No. While several slashes from the Kendoka could end the fight, slashes amputate at times, separate muscles, can create gashes that lead to bleed out, a stab could potentially do that too though, but you get what I mean. The point I'm trying to make is that both of these weapons and really the martial arts attached to them have pros and cons, and it really comes down to the skill of the martial artist. Anyways, this is where I will end the video. Definitely make sure to slash that like button and make sure to leave me your opinions in the comment section down below. I'd love to read it. And of course, see you next time. Hey, thanks for watching the video. If you want to check out more content, click one of the videos on the screen. Big thanks goes out to my newest patron, Tony Maloney. If you'd like to support the channel, go check out my Patreon right now. Link will be in the description.